All right, I think I got everybody to record. Is anybody needing the access to record? Yeah, I am. Oh, Scott, there you go. All right, I think I got everybody to record. Is anybody needing the access to record? I do too. James, I think you should retract Scott's ability to record. Okay, sounds good. Why? <laughs> I agree. I agree. Get him out of here. <laughs> Chad, aren't you supposed to be at the Statue of Liberty or something today? <laughs> uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Guys, now I will have Gary first, and then we'll go into Coach Ferentz. Good to go. So All right, it looks like Gary's on. Um, James will be moderating, but Gary, if you want to go ahead and get us started, uh, talking about the uh, 20th bowl game for uh, Coach Ference's time here at Iowa. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, the Zoom world allows me to multitask. Just finished up with uh, wrestling and Carver and um, just working on a, a bowl logistics meeting. So I uh, was really grateful to receive the, um, the call this afternoon from the Transperfect Music City Bowl, uh, something that uh, they've been talking to us now for a couple of weeks. Actually, we've been in great conversations for a few years. And as most of you know, uh, we were invited. And then that uh, went sideways due to COVID. But uh, I, I just, uh, I know our players are excited. I was talking to a few of them yesterday about this possibility. And uh, first of all, I want to congratulate the players, the coaches. They've earned this opportunity. So I'm really excited for them. And I'm also excited for our fans because over the past few years, I know uh, many fans have approached me saying they'd be excited to, to go to, to Nashville and uh, take over that city. So 
uh, really excited about the opportunity. And and um, I know it's a great bowl. I know uh, our fans are going to enjoy it and our players and coaches are, are truly going to enjoy it. a great um, um, property for the team and certainly a terrific and familiar opponent uh, playing uh, against Kentucky. So uh, looking forward to it. I will uh, turn it over to Kirk and then if people have questions for either of us, um, uh, happy to try and answer those afterward. But again, Kirk, congratulations, um, 20, 20 bowls. That's as a head coach, that's quite a run. I appreciate that, Gary, and thank you. Um, obviously, you know, we're just really happy and excited to get the news. It was great to learn from Steve Ramsey that we're going to have an opportunity to play on the Transperfect uh, Music City Bowl in Nashville. And uh, as Gary mentioned, we thought we had that opportunity coming a couple of years ago. It didn't materialize. So uh, this is really special. Uh, also, as been mentioned, it is our 20th bowl now since 2001. And I think, you know, each one of them represent, I think, a, a you know, significant accomplishment. And then the other part about it, uh, each one, you know, are really uh, something that's appreciated by everybody in our our, our team, our program. Uh, you know, they are special uh, opportunities for our team. Most importantly, our players and just uh, to have this happen is, is really a good thing. Uh, in general terms, uh, the way I've always looked at it, it's one chance, one more chance for our entire football team to um, compete together and work together for another uh, couple of weeks, which is great. Uh, for the seniors, it's exactly that because this will be the last time they get a chance to compete uh, with the Tiger Hawk on on their uh, on their helmet. And uh, I can tell you, it's really special before they go on off to their adult lives or uh, whatever chapter is next for them. And then, yeah, for the younger guys, uh, significant from that standpoint as well as just it's an opportunity to con con continue to develop. And these are really uh, you know important opportunities for all the players uh, that haven't played a lot uh, or even guys that have played that are younger. To continue to uh, move forward as players and, and uh, you know, uh, really the way you learn how to play football. There are a lot of different things that go into it, but the most important part, you have to go out and do it and practice it. And uh, we only have limited opportunities to so to pick up this uh, this month uh, is really beneficial for everybody. And if you want to have a highly competitive team, competitive program, it's just a really important opportunity. So, uh, again, just appreciative on a lot of levels. And uh, you know, you look across the line now, you know, it's uh, always good to know where you're playing and then who you're playing. Certainly there's some familiarity with uh, the Kentucky program. Uh, Coach Stoops being a graduate of this program and playing when I was an assistant. Uh, but more importantly, just what he's done as a head coach in the program they've built at Kentucky. And we got exposure to that firsthand last year at this time. Uh, nothing but great respect for them. I'm, I'm not overly knowledgeable about this year's team, but uh, I know what their program stands for, how it's built. And we know we're going to be uh, in a very competitive situation again, uh, a big challenge for us. So that, that's exciting as well. Um, and then it is kind of an interesting sidebar. My nephew actually brought it up that we we kicked off the year, uh, 2000, the calendar year 2022, playing Kentucky. And now, ironically, we're going to finish it uh, on, on the 20, 20, 31st, excuse me, with the same opponent. So that's a little bit of an interesting sidebar. And as Gary mentioned we thought we we're going to, to Nashville a couple of years back, and now we get to actually do it. So uh, anyway, it's just really good to know who we're playing. We can uh, start thinking a little bit about our preparation and doing some game plan as well as the other things that we are doing. Uh, just shift gears for one second. You know, our, our roster uh, is in a process of shifting, probably like every uh, college football program in America right now. Uh, these are uncharted times, certainly, uh, with some of the new things that are going on in college football. And, and we're really no different. So, you know, we got a few things that are going on there. And then uh, on, on a notable front, uh, unfortunately, Spencer Peters will not be able to play in the game. The uh, injury he had in the uh, Nebraska ball game was uh, significant, significant enough to require surgery. So he's not going to be able to compete. Uh, nobody's more disappointed than him, obviously, like any player that has a uh, injury that, that requires surgery, just takes him out of competition and, uh, you know, it's going to be good that he'll be with us, but, uh, you know, all of us wish he wasn't on the sideline supporting the team. But uh, that is the one thing I have to uh, report right now. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm not really aware of anything new injury wise since uh, last week. And hopefully it stays that way. So we'll we'll go from there on that front. Um, you know, as I mentioned, too, that, uh, you know, the rosters are shifting right now. So like everybody else, we do have some movement. And, you know, I could go uh, really up until any point. Uh, like years in the past, you've got guys uh, making decisions about NFL status, uh, decisions about playing in bowl games, just a sign of the times like the portal. So 
yeah, we'll uh, keep you abreast of that as we learn more. Uh, a couple guys have made up their minds. A couple guys are other uh, trying to figure out what they want to do. And, uh, you know, just encourage our players to give a good thought. And uh, the biggest thing is once we start our, our preparation in earnest, we want to make sure everybody's ready to roll and they're totally on board. So uh, the other part, just, you know, playing at the end of the month gives, I think, us ample time for our guys to do a good job finishing up the uh, last week of classes this week, going through finals, and then giving us a chance to have good preparation block before we head, head down to Tennessee. So all that, you know, kind of, I think, pulls together pretty well. Um, and then, you know, again, just as uh, we move forward, as, as we get more information about logistics, travel, all those types of things, we'll be sharing them as, as we go. I uh, just want to say again, our review, just really excited to be invited to the uh, TransPerfect uh, Music City Bowl. Excited about the opportunity and really excited for our team to have the full bowl experience. And uh, I know our players that were on, are on the team that were on the team in 2020 were excited about it. As Gary alluded to, I think they're more excited now. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, with that, I'll throw it out to questions. All right, Coach, first question will be from Tom Kaker. Hey, Kirk, um, want to know, will um, will Joe Lavis be your starter in the bowl game then? Well, it'll be the him or uh, Carson May, one of the two. And we'll let those guys work the next four weeks and, uh, you know, see how they do. We were on the field yesterday and uh, both of them did some good things. But obviously, we got got some – Work to do with both guys. The good news is we have four weeks to get that done. Next question is from John Steppy. Along those lines, what have been your impressions from Joe and from Carson th throughout the season on the scout team? Uh, you know, good. And uh, you hope all the guys are good. Uh, the, the one guy, you know, as soon as you mentioned that, I'm thinking about TJ Hawkinson, who was a redshirt freshman, uh, tortured our defense and um, you know, really did a good job. So, you know, it was no big surprise that he ended up developing into a really good football player and then only was with us for two more years and uh, ends up being the eighth or ninth player drafted. So, you know, you just never know what the path's going to be, but both those guys have done a good job. They're good young guys. And uh, obviously they're, they're lacking experience right now, and that's our job to move them forward. Coach, next question is from Kennington Smith. Afternoon, Coach. Appreciate you taking the time speaking with us. Um, wanted to get an update on Cooper DeGene and Sam Laporta. Yeah, they're they're they would not have played if we played yesterday uh, or this weekend. Uh, but I'd expect uh, Cooper for sure to re return here at the end of the week, and I think Sam's very close. He's he's out on the field and moving around pretty good, but uh, he would not have been game ready this weekend, nor nor would have Cooper. But expect them both to be fully ready to go in the bowl game. I, I know they're excited. I don't want to speak for our guys on our team. Uh, but I, I can tell just by the way they're acting, they're excited to play another game. The next question is from Scott Docterman. Yeah, good afternoon, Kirk. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the uh, the, the transfer portal. You've had some some significant departures, I guess, or at least they've announced it. Um, or even though tomorrow is the first day that non graduate transfers uh, can act officially enter it, do you expect everybody who announced? to actually go to the portal or is there some uh, maybe some swaying back the other way towards staying for one or, or two of them? Yeah, it's a great question, Scott, on a couple of levels and and uh, we're all learning. Uh, one thing I learned this, you know, I'm trying to sort all this stuff out. Who can we talk to? Who can't we talk to? Uh, one thing I also learned is, you know, players that played on staffs where the uh, coaching staff was fired, uh, they're treated like graduate transfers. So you can have, you know, a conversation with those folks. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, and I didn't cover this in my comments, uh, glad you asked, uh, not everybody's 100%. And um, that was kind of my encouragement when I talked to the team yesterday, um, was just, you know, take some time here, um, deliberately take some time over the next few days and make sure, you know, if you want to be here, you're here and your feet are here and full, full-fledged and uh, part of the team because, uh, and we've dealt with this in the past, and I imagine most colleges have where, a guy's trying to make a decision, do I go to the NFL, don't go to the NFL? And it's not good for anybody. When you get in that situation, I would venture it's going to be the same way at the portal. Do I leave? Do I stay? And, um, you know, it's just a different time in, in uh, sports right now. So uh, my encouragement to our guys is, uh, you know, if you're serious about playing in this game, then let, let's go. And uh, if you're not, then wait back. And then we'll, we'll handle each situation individually uh, in terms of the players. But uh, I would say the majority of the guys that, you know, have announced that they uh, have thoughts probably won't won't be back with us. And, um, you know, with that, maybe that creates opportunity. Maybe there are other players out there 
uh, like Zach Van Valkenburg, uh, Jack Keflin, and Makai Sargent, you know, going back chronologically. They ended up coming here from other places and did a great job and really added to our program. And they're all still active participants in the NFL. They're really good players. But more importantly, they're really great guys that uh, really added to our team. So, you know, it's just uh, you have to change your framework, your perspective. And, and um, you know, every, every guy we recruit, our goal is to have them graduate from Iowa and finish their careers at Iowa. But if that's not possible, then, you know, we'll look for guys that maybe are uh, interested in doing that. Coach, next question is from Chad Lice to go. Slice to co. Slice to co. Alan. Come on, Alan. Um, <laughs> uh, on the, on uh, Joe Labus and and Carson May Kirk, um, how how much more? How much less has May done? I guess than Labus. When we've seen Joe out there in the spring game on Kids Day, whatnot. Um, like, how far behind would he be? I guess uh, you know from Joe at this point? Yeah, typically in any year, uh, most of the reps go to your one and two guys uh, when you're practicing. And, uh, you know, one thing when we changed our whole schedule back in, in 2015, uh, went to a morning schedule, it, it made it a little tougher, more challenging to do some work that we call developmental work uh, with guys that aren't necessarily in the too deep. So it's probably the only negative I think all of us uh, feel came out of that uh, assessment. And uh, so we try to create those things we did during bye week. And, uh, you know, we try to steal, you know, maybe eight plays, 10 plays here for the younger guys. But all that being said, you know, it's not the same as working with the ones or twos. It never has been, never will be. So uh, we'll do our best to take advantage of this this time. And that's one good thing about the month of December. You have time available. Uh, so we'll try to, to, you know, find out what they can do and do successfully. And, uh, you know, part of the challenge is to the rest of the team. It's like when any, any good player gets injured, everybody else has to step it up and, uh, do a little bit more, you know, that'll be our approach, uh, you know, and we'll, you know, our intention is to win this game. That, that's our goal and intention. And uh, we'll, we'll try to figure out a plan that's going to give us an opportunity to do that. Next question is from John Steppy. Historically, you've been one of the more conservative programs in the transfer portal. How does the kind of slew of transfer portal entries that you've already seen change that? And what's specifically going to be your approach at wide receiver in the portal? Yeah, I think it's way too early to say because, uh, you know, you don't know how our numbers compare to other numbers. And, you know, quite frankly, I don't think our numbers are a lot different right now than they were for the entire year last year. Uh, not dramatically different. And but the difference is that they all kind of are centralized now in a time period, whereas, you know, you might have a guy here, a guy four weeks later, five weeks later in years past. But, you know, the portals open this up. It's just a, it's a whole new time in college football. Factor NIL, couple that with the uh, portal. Uh, just sort of like, you know, guys, you know, I, I remember when it was really unusual for a guy not to play in a bowl game. I'll date myself, and I can't remember who the player. It was a pretty prominent player that didn't play in the Orange Bowl, and you know, I was naive, naive enough to think, you know, uh, coaching in the Orange Bowl is a pretty big deal for me, and I, I would think playing in the Orange Bowl would be a big deal for a player. But again, we're just, it's kind of a sign that we're, we're moving into different times, so uh, you just have to accept it, I think, and you deal with it. And, uh, um, you know, you always hate to lose any player from the program. I, I said that earlier, and I, I do mean that sincerely. But uh, you know, Mike Tomlin, I think, was quoted saying, you know, you don't want a, a hostage in the building either. So if a guy's not really, you know, really interested, and those are his words, not my bit. If a guy's not 100% on board, it's, it's probably best for everybody just to, to go separate ways. And uh, then our, our task is to to look at the portal and look at the transfer market and try to learn about them just like we would any uh, recruit that we're looking at coming out of high school and uh, try to bolster the uh, the roster. Now, all that being said, it's, it's going to affect the month of December for, I think, probably most programs. I'll just go on, on a limb and say that. You guys know the numbers better than I do. So, you know, to, to, to try to quantify it right now and compare it to other years, uh, I don't think that's reasonable just because the years this year is so different than any year we've been in. Next question is from Mike Kloss. Kirk, forgive me for not knowing this, but are you allowed to talk about Cade McNamara? Can't talk about any prospects, so I can talk about the guys on our team right now. Okay. I, uh, I, well, I, had, I checked on uh, not that specific name, but I checked on that detail today just to make sure I didn't step in one. Okay. Well, that said, um, what did you uh, think about Cade McNamara and the way he played against you and in general last year? Yeah, he impressed the hell out of me. Their whole team did. And, uh, you know, he was a leader of that team, a captain on that team. 
uh, very, very impressive. And, and the guy that played last night was very impressive too. So, um, you know, big surprise. Michigan's got some good players and, you know, it's uh, probably a long tradition there. Next question is from Corey Breda. Hey, Coach, just piggybacking off a, a question earlier, I just wanted to clarify in the portal, um, if a player enters their name tomorrow or whenever, uh, does that does, does that sell them on leaving? Are you open to accepting a player back? I mean, I think back to Davion Nixon and his situation, has your stance on that changed? And then kind of a second part to that, is there ever a scenario in which you could see a player who's in the portal being a part of bowl prep and actually potentially uh, play on December 31st? Yeah, it's possible. I don't think, you know, there will be a high number of those, uh, at least in our program. But uh, that's what I was referencing a little bit earlier, trying to trying to uh, articulate. Uh, I think I think our approach will be we'll look at each and every individual case. And I can share this with you that uh, a couple of the players, you know, they're very firm in their thinking. And, um, you know, amazingly, a couple of them already had, uh, I think, a destination, uh, you know, in mind and, and probably, uh, you know, worked out. So. Uh, and that's good. It's good they have a home. Uh, you know, the bigger, bigger issue in this whole thing is, you know, a couple months from now, how many guys are going to be homeless uh, in terms of, you know, leaving a scholarship situation and ending up without one. Um, but, you know, that that's a different discussion. So, yeah, we'll handle each and every uh, case, you know, case by case, depend on the individual and try to use judgment that uh, really is in, in the player's best interest and ours as well. Coach, next question is from Scott Docterman. Yeah, Kirk, I know you've only had uh, what about nine days or thereabouts to kind of assess the season, but do you anticipate your staff being uh, intact in, say, in February, or do you think that there might be some departures? Um, do you have any any kind of an update to share in that area? Yeah, I mean, departures on our staff are sort of like the, the portal uh, in your team. I mean, it could happen there. Um, you know, a couple thoughts on that, just, you know, again, simplification, but I, I look at our season and I'm an optimist, as you guys probably know, uh, you know, we lost two games by three points. We lost two teams that are in the college football playoffs, which I think is historic from our conference. Um, uh, you know, both in the same season, we played those two teams. And, uh, as I said, back when we played them, I thought they were pretty strong. I think it's, it's been verified on the field and, and by the, uh, the selection committee today. And then we lost a game last week where we had two key players injured. We turned it over and gave up a big play, the things that had really helped us win the four previous games. So, you know, every season's a new season. Every season a different season. Every season has its own story. Um, but, you know, yeah, it is what it is. And I, I told the team yesterday, I'm, I'm really proud of them. And it's been enjoyable to work with them. And I'm looking forward to working with them. Uh, I think our whole staff is this coming month. And then, like every year, you know, we'll do a comprehensive study on everything we're doing. And I, I really kind of foresee this year being similar to what uh, what we did. And I had this thought weeks ago, uh, what we did in 14, you know, 14. Uh, that's when we went to the morning schedule, et cetera. But uh, we do a study every, each and every year. But I think this one will probably be a little bit more thorough and a little bit more detailed. On a, on a side note to that, and I apologize for jumping in, I believe it was that it was that year and, and a couple other times you've done that where uh, I think 07 going into 08, you kind of doubled down more on being more Iowa-like and, and probably be more insular. Do you anticipate that or is it just going to be a little bit just the total evaluation will take you into the direction of where you want to go? Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a multitude of things we'll cover, and I don't think anything's really broken right now. Uh, but I think there's probably things that we can do better, like every year. Uh, but you know, it's a wide range of things, whether it's our our players, our coaching staff, uh, our approach, each phase of the year from a football standpoint, the recruiting, you know, all these things. And, and now you got a new topic with transfer portal, and uh, you know, we're all kind of winging it right now in that regard and learning as we go. It's kind of been interesting, quite frankly, but. Um, in some ways, it's it's kind of you know exhilarating because there is opportunity there. I think if, if you're careful about how you do it, uh, but yeah, all that being said, yeah, we're going to go through everything and just you know see what we come up with. But uh, as I just went ran through our season, I don't think anything's broken here right now. And uh, you know, if you look around college football in the landscape, um, you know, not every season turns out the way you want. It'd be great if it did, but I'm, I'm sitting here right now. We've over five years. I think we're third in the Big Ten for victories. Uh, as disappointing as it was to lose a couple of tough games this year. And I'm, I'm proud of our program, proud of the people involved. And you know, our focus uh, will be like it always is, is looking on, you know, how can we improve? How can we get better? Next question is from Chad Leistico. 
a couple quarterback questions, you know, shocker. Uh, but uh, do you expect, uh, I guess I feel, feel for Spencer, obviously. Um, do you expect him, how long will he be out? And do you expect to have a conversation about him returning? And then second, secondly, um, uh, have you, can you think of a situation like this in your coaching career where you've, where you've had, you go into a game with two guys that have never played a game? <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you hang around long enough, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, this is an instance or, you know, example of that. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not ideal. Uh, but I, I think about 2010 when a guy named Coker jumped in there and ran for 225, I think it was, uh, down against Missouri. So, you know, it's just, you know, your approach got to be, we got to try to figure out, we as coaches have to figure out what we can do to give our team the best chance to win, knowing the players involved. And we'll know a lot more about that after a couple of weeks here. So it is a really high, highly interesting situation, but uh, you know we got a lot of strengths on our team too. So we'll try to play to those, and I'm sure Kentucky's going to do the same thing with their team. And uh, you know, it'll be hopefully a great game for both teams. Um, going back to Spencer, um, unfortunately, you know, it required surgery. We were hoping that wasn't the case. Of course, it couldn't have just been a bruise or a sprain. So it required surgery, and I think uh, it's probably unrealistic to think that he'll be able to throw a ball for several months now, including spring. So I think, you know, first things first, let's get him healthy. And then, um, you know, I think he would have had a chance to be a, a, a maybe, you know, a pro guy, a pro free agent. Um, I don't, I don't know how this is going to affect it. We'll know a lot more, you know, in the new calendar year on that one. All right, coach. Last question will be from John Steppy. You were mentioning the nothing really being broken a lot of the offensive stats have you in the last 10. What are the metrics that you're going to be using to evaluate the offense and the offensive coordinator in particular? Well, you know, it'll be a lot more extensive uh, once we get to the out of season. Uh, but you know, as I, I've kind of been relaying to you all along, uh, you know, you go back and, and one of the guys that played last night played very well in the game. That was a big loss to us in the out of season talking about the portal. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, they gave the story about why he left. It wasn't discontent here. I don't think, uh, but, you know, played with a high school quarterback or at least a childhood friend, uh, you know, so it is what it is, but that was a loss injuries, uh, keeping players off the field, good players off the field. If you go back and look at who was on the field, uh, for a couple of the games early in the season, uh, I think that was a reasonable, uh, affected us, uh, things I know about some of the development of our younger guys and the, you know, things like that, you know, where there was, some things that impeded their development and you know, we thought they'd be further along thinking about the guys up front. And, you know, from my vantage point, that's uh, what I said about both quarterbacks, Spencer and Alex, tough to get a fair assessment just because of the way we were operating and uh, you know, challenges. Can we fix that? Can, are we doing things well enough? You know, is the system uh, geared towards, you know, um, having success offensively You know, we've had success too with, you know, the system and the coaches here, so, you know, we'll, we'll take all that into measurement and, uh, you know, that'll go in earnest in, in January, start in earnest in January. Right now, our focus will be on, you know, getting ready for this game and, and uh, you know, trying to put a good football team out there on the field. All right. Thank you for your time, Coach. Okay. Thanks, guys.